Hi, John here. Today we're going to be doing a short video about the engine cooling water system. So I'm on the website. I'm just going to cycle down now until I get to the thermostat. Now the thermostat itself is a component in the cooling water system, but rather than load up that model, what I'm actually going to do is load up another one called 3D cooling water system. And what we can do is talk our way through each of the components and hopefully get a better understanding of how the whole thing works. So the model's now loaded. It's an animated model. As you can see, there's a lot of arrows flying around here, there and everywhere. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pause it first and we can talk our way through some of the components. You can see here that we've got an engine. Just to the left of the engine, we have a jacket water cooling pump. This is this section here. Behind that, we have a thermostat. This thermostat is usually mounted on top of the engine, but I've put it just outside of the engine here for simplicity. And the thermostat connects to a radiator. That's this large metal sheet here with the white arrows coming out of it. The white actually symbolizes air passing through it. And after the radiator, you can see we've got a fan just in front of it. Above the radiator, we've got a tank. This tank is actually an overflow tank. That's that one here. And again, just after the radiator, it goes back into the engine. So without getting into any complicated terminology or components or anything like that, let's just go through the system and I'll tell you exactly how the whole thing works. So I'm going to zoom back in now to the jacket water pump. Now the jacket water pump is taking jacket water. I call it jacket water. You can actually call it cooling water as well. It's a 50-50 mix between glycol and water. The glycol could be ethanol glycol. And the idea with this glycol is it stops the water becoming foamy when it passes through the pump. It also stops the water changing state. So instead of boiling at 100 degrees, for example, it will no longer be able to do this. And in addition to all this, the glycol actually contains a corrosion inhibitor, which stops rust forming on the internals of the engine and any associated pipe work. So the glycol actually does a lot. And this 50-50 mix of glycol and water is what forms the cooling water system. Now I mentioned earlier that it struggles to change state but when you add the glycol but it should also be noted the water in the system is also under pressure and because it's under pressure this actually raises the boiling point of the water. The jacket water pump itself circulates jacket water or coolant water around the engine. The flow and the pressure is regulated by the engine itself. We can see that here because the belt is connected directly to the crankshaft. Some people call the belt an accessory belt because it also drives other things such as an alternator, but they'll all be connected via pulleys onto this belt and they'll all be driven from the crankshaft. Because it's driven from the crankshaft, the flow and the pressure that's achieved by the pump is regulated by the speed of the engine. If the engine goes faster, then the pump will also turn faster. And this gives you an increase in pressure and also an increase in flow. So that's what the jacket water pump is doing. Sometimes you'll see, as we have here, a metal impeller, but sometimes they'll also be made of rubber. And it's circulating cooling water through the cooling water system or through the jacket water system. If we go a little bit in here, we see a pipe here. The pipe connects to the thermostat. And what I might do here, I might just hit the play button and talk you through it as the animation's playing. Okay, so as you can see here, this is cold cooling water coming in. It gets to the thermostat. It's not possible to travel upwards because this area here is actually closed. So the valve at the top is closed, but it is possible for it to travel downwards. Now, if it goes downwards, the cooling water is bypassing the radiator. See it's coming out here, out there, and it bypasses the radiator. 
Normally the thermostat will be mounted on the top of the engine, so there won't be any hoses, it will just circulate the cooling water inside the engine. But for our purposes, we'll make it a little bit easier and put the thermostat outside. So that's what happens when the engine is cold. Now this will actually run for about a minute. Let's set the animation up so it runs for one minute cold. I'll see if I can speed it up a bit. And then we'll figure out what happens to the engine when it gets a bit warmer and eventually hot. The thermostat itself is actually just directing the cooling water. It's either bypassing the radiator or it's sending cooling water. There we go, it's just changed. It's sending cooling water to the radiator. Notice here that the red arrow is going through the thermostat at the top and at the bottom here, this is now closed. So this seals the bypass and at the same time, we can see that the thermostat is open at the top and the hot water is flowing through. What's actually happened here is that the valve or this thermostat is regulated via temperature. As the temperature increased, the wax within this cylinder expanded. As it expanded, it pushed a rod out here and this rod, because it expanded and got pushed out, this rod opened the top of the valve. You can see the springs now under compression. It's been squashed. And here we've pushed this section here, this lower valve piece onto a valve seat and we've effectively closed the bypass. So the engine's warm or it's hot and we need now to cool the engine using the cooling water system. And the only way we can cool the engine is to send the cooling water to the radiator. So we've done that. The cooling water now is going to the radiator. As you can see, it's flowing into the radiator, down the radiator, and there's air, that's what these white arrows are here, flowing across the radiator. You can actually see, let me just see if I can, there we go, you see red, red, is there any more red? There's more red arrows. So the hot or the warm cooling water is flowing down through the radiator, it's been air cooled, and what we're actually getting out is cold cooling water or cold jacket water. I say cold, it's not really cold, but you might be wanting to maintain a temperature of let's say 80 degrees. And that's what the radiator and the thermostat is allowing you to do. If you've got a temperature of 80 degrees or 85 degrees, etc., you might actually want to then close the radiator and open the bypass. However, if you start to get temperatures higher than that, you'll want to open the port to the radiator and close the bypass. So all the thermostat is doing really is preventing the engine from overheating. If you open the top valve, then you're flowing to the radiator because the engine's too hot. And if you open the lower port or the lower valve, then you're bypassing the radiator because the engine's too cold. And that effectively is the entire system. You can see here it runs through hoses and it will go back to the engine. The jacket water system actually gets its name because these sections here, these ports next to the combustion space are actually called jackets. And you can see normally they'll be flowing or we'd actually have fluid flowing around these combustion spaces. So all the heat that's generated during combustion, we can remove and we'll stop the engine from overheating. If we zoom out a little bit more, I'll show you one more interesting piece. The other interesting piece is a overflow tank. This is this section here. Now I've connected the hoses, but what you're actually gonna see is a hose coming from the radiator cap, that's this section here, and going to the tank. The reason you need the hose there is because as the jacket water becomes warmer, it'll expand and as it expands, the pressure within the closed system increases. So you need to have a radiator cap here. That's a section here or this piece here. You need that radiator cap so that the water can get out, go into this hose and you'll relieve the pressure in the system. Anyway, that's how the whole system works. You can go to the website and have a look at the model itself. I'm actually going to back out of this one and what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up a full screen thermostat model which is also on the website. 
and we've actually added some annotations to this model so you can actually see the names of the charged cylinder the main valve secondary valve and things like that i hope you found that informative and interesting as you can see there's an introduction here which tells you a bit about the thermostat there's a full screen model here which tells you about the thermostat again but this time with annotations the 3d cooling water system explains how the whole thing comes together how you cool an engine and how you regulate the temperature in an engine and with all of this plus the video you should really be able to get a good understanding of how the whole thing works if you want to help us out please like the video or share it with your friends and if you do want to support us please check out our patreon page thank you very much for your time